The stories abound. Dowsers winning the lottery, locating treasure, gambling, finding optimum stock market investments, and making important corporate and personal decisions. But what makes ESP-related skills such as dowsing actually work? The answer lies almost entirely with the subconscious mind. If you don't understand what the subconscious is, you're not alone. Many individuals may have an idea of when they receive information from this area of consciousness, but few understand it. Moments such as someone calling you on the phone just as you were thinking about them, or having the feeling that something unfortunate is happening or about to occur. Due to the lack of a better explanation, many refer to this as intuition, listening to your gut or feeling a vibe. We can think of human consciousness as being divided into two regions. One is referred to as conscious awareness and the other as the subconscious. As we proceed through each waking moment, the flood of smells, colors, sounds, tastes, and textures coming through our senses from the outside world are initially processed by our subconscious, not our conscious awareness. In fact, only a minuscule percentage of our environmental data is passed up and out of the subconscious and into our conscious awareness. Well, the basis of remote viewing functionality isn't necessarily conscious interaction. The conscious aspects will come last. We become aware of the remote viewing signal in the final stages of this. What's, most of the work is being done at, at what's generally known as a subconscious level. It's, um, we talk in terms of the subconscious, the human subconscious, being connected with the rest of the universe in some interesting way that allows us to get information from places distant or, or hidden from us in some way. That All that information is available to the subconscious. It's just bringing up into conscious awareness where it can be useful that we run into difficulties. Notoriously, the subconscious is a repository for huge amounts of information hundreds of thousands, millions of data bits that never make it up into conscious awareness. Uh, the bandwidth between subconscious and conscious is very narrow and only a small amount of inf information ever comes to our cognition that we can actually work with in a conscious way. That's normal for any kind of sense. And when you in add this ESP material in there, that's additional information that has to compete for that narrow bandwidth. So the trick is, to how do we get that information and make it available so that we can use it? Well, in remote viewing, the idea is you go through this process that, that we were trained in in the military uh, to access the information, the factual information, uh, the visual information, uh, in order for us to put it down on a piece of paper to express it and get it make it available for analysts. But how does all of this explain the movement that occurs with dowsing rods? Let's think for a moment of a seismograph. This is a sensitive instrument designed to measure sudden movements in the Earth, such as those caused by earthquakes. Some seismographs are so responsive that they can catch subtle variations from the other side of the planet. Dowsing rods work on this same principle, but instead of being affected by the Earth's subtle movements, they're affected by the human nervous system. A lot of different theories about how dowsing works. Uh, the one that predominated for a long time was magnetism. The idea was that somehow the dowser uh, was able to identify or, or that, that there was a magnetic interaction between the dowser and the whatever it's trying to be located. Now this normally happened when the dowser was looking for water or when the dowser was uh, dowsing for minerals or that kind of thing. Uh, that, that was the ex explanation that was used. And so they'd go and you know, they'd douse for it and supposedly there's this attraction that caused the rods to work or whatever. In fact, uh, later on when it seemed apparent that there was no such force that was strong enough to make these rods work, particular ones made out of wood, which are non-magnetic anyway, uh, it got to, the feeling got to be that there was some inner uh, mechanism that dowsers possessed. If you imagine yourself, for example, throwing a ball, even though it's just your imagination, uh, you're, the muscles that actually would be involved in that throwing that ball actually get activated and there are micro movements. Even though you never actually perform the motion, your muscles in a way perform it just at a much lower level so that's not noticeable. And, and anytime we have those kind of um, ideas of any kind of action or activity, our muscles respond at a very low level so we're not even aware of it but nonetheless it's happening. 
It's called the idiomotor response. When people go out to douse, then that idiomotor response, they're expecting to find water, and so when they come to a place where they think water is, even though they're consciously trying very hard not to move the rods themselves, there's this involuntary motion of the muscles, which they're not even aware of, that cause the instrument, the pendulum, the rods, or whatever, to actually move. The nervous system can generate subtle movements that are undetectable by our conscious awareness. So it's easy to understand why some dowsers may believe that an invisible force is responsible for moving their tools when they use L-rods or pendulums. But the question still remains, how does the subconscious know the answers to the information you are seeking in the first place? Especially information that would seem to be unobtainable, such as locating buried treasure, or knowing what the next winning color on a roulette wheel will be. This aspect of ESP-related skill might still be one of the most mysterious and controversial topics in related scientific research. But thanks to quantum physics, a theory called quantum entanglement may provide new insight into how the subconscious can obtain what some previously believed to be unobtainable. Uh, there may be explanations available in quantum physics, but in only a narrow scope of it, a, a feature called non-locality, um, which has the idea that things are entangled. There's several different terms for it, Bell's theorem, non-locality, quantum entanglement. Um, there's some interesting uh, features of that part of quantum theory that might explain not just things like dowsing, but also things like remote viewing or ESP in general. Uh, the idea here uh, is that physical particles, not subatomic particles, that become entangled sometime in their past, uh, they establish a kind of a, cor a causative correlation so that when they're separated by a long distance sometime in the future, if you affect one, then you have an instant effect on the other. Um, some of the, the results of the experiments in this suggest the sorts of things you, you encounter when you're doing down and remote viewing. At one time, physicists believed that atoms were the smallest form of matter in existence. Then we discovered atoms were actually comprised of even smaller particles called electrons, protons, and neutrons. Today, we now know that even deeper levels of subatomic particles exist in the composition of all matter, including biological life, forms of energy, and neurons, a component for human thought. As the name implies, entanglement occurs when two or more of these subatomic particles form an association at what is now believed to be the lowest level of subatomic existence. The association between these particles allow influences that affect one particle to occur to the other, instantly and regardless of distance. As a result, some researchers refer to this as non-locality, nullifying the idea that information travels between the particles and instead that it is somehow already and instantaneously connected at another level of existence. While this may seem inconceivable to some, it's no more astonishing than at one time theorizing how the splitting of an atom could not only be possible, but that it could be harnessed as a destructive weapon. The advancements made within quantum mechanics including the theory of quantum entanglement, may begin to provide the answers to how the subconscious mind is able to obtain information about an unknown or remote target, providing insight into the mechanics behind dowsing and all related ESP skill.